One of the th um, other things we know about ADHD is it's associated with a wide range of other symptoms, syndromes and psychiatric disorders. So as well as the um, um, sort of impairments that people have in their cognitive function or their ability to work, for example, um, or, or their social interactions with people, there's also a very high level of risk for developing other psychiatric conditions or other symptoms and syndromes. And this is sort of one of the issues that adult psychiatrists find most difficult. You know, they often say ADHD is one of the most difficult dis disorders to diagnose, perhaps because of all the comorbidities that go alongside it. But I, um, I don't actually agree with that view. I mean, I think if you go through the criteria in a sort of careful, structured way, um, it turns out that the symptoms of ADHD really cluster together in a sort of very reliable way and a very stable way. And that's kind of partly why the condition is so heritable, because it is actually relatively easy to measure. But the issue with comorbidity is that um, adults with ADHD are more likely to present with other problems, and that could commonly be things like anxiety or depression. But it could be other problems like a personality disorder, a substance use disorder, um, but also neurodevelopmental problems. So they're also more likely to have autism or dyslexia or reading problems, um, intellectual disability and so on. But I think we also know from family and twin studies that ADHD tends to co-occur with a whole range of neurodevelopmental problems. So at least one ought to be sort of on the lookout for problems with autism. I mean, reading disability is one of the most common problems associated with ADHD and it's particularly linked to the inattentive symptoms of the condition. Um, but also, um, you know, other more behavioral problems like um, oppositional behavior and antisocial behavior, um, although environmental effects um, obviously come into that, but it does turn out that genetic effects are also important in driving uh, people with ADHD sort of um, down a, a sort of um, an antisocial behavioral pathway. So I mean, if somebody has major depression, you're going to treat that first. Or if they clearly um, are in the middle of a manic episode, you have to treat that. But on the other hand, if somebody has a personality disorder, um, you know, where the treatments um, for that are not so obvious, I mean, treating the underlying ADHD may have a huge impact. You know, first of all, in reducing certain symptoms, um, like, um, like their sort of mood volatility, for example, or just their ability to sort of focus on and engage with people, um, could then have a huge impact on any other forms of treatment for them. So at least in those cases, you ought to be screening for ADHD and, di and treating it before going on to treating you know, other aspects of the disorder. Um, you can sort of have a similar you know, situation would come up for people with sort of more severe problems, people with a substance use disorder, for example. We know that about 12% of them have ADHD.